You're listening to Kizuki, the podcast. I'm Mei Yoshikawa, and I define the Japanese concept of Kizuki as the following Kizuki. One, a moment of epiphany, an aha of realization or insight which opens the knower to a new dimension of truth that was formerly unknown. Two, steps in an incremental growth of awareness. Resulting in a movement from ignorance to greater awareness of the bigger picture. A kind of knowing that cannot be undone, that cannot be unrealized. As a long time yoga and meditation practitioner, a world traveler, and curious self explorer, I'm obsessed with Kizukis. Listen on each week for inspiring and enlightening stories that may just tip you over for your next aha. On this week's episode, when self acceptance doesn't work. Hi, everyone. This week, I want to dive in and talk about some of the subtle aspects of the mind as they surface in meditation and during your day to day life, too. But some of these things can be so tricky and insidious. And I came across one, a huge one myself. It actually brought me to tears last night. And metaphorically speaking, I was on my knees and humbled by, well, none other than my own foolishness. So let me share this with you and see if any of you might resonate. Now, as a long-time yoga and meditation practitioner, I have come to be familiar with self-acceptance. That means not just accepting the parts of yourself that are easy to accept, like the successful parts, the pretty parts, the good parts, but more importantly, the harder stuff, when you mess up, when you temporarily hate yourself, when you despise yourself, when it feels like you suck, but that's actually when you need love and acceptance most. And a lot of these things, they play out as thoughts, thoughts of self-judgment and self-criticism, but also a lot of them as raging, turbulent, and sometimes depressive emotions, which is why meditation and these things, they're a lifelong practice, right? We're all human and we go through seasons. We have the ebb and flow of life, the spectrum of emotions that we feel, taste, and experience. And through each of them, we're learning to be with it, be present with it, and to accept it, not resist it. For me on a personal level, I know that when my vibrant, young, healthy, super healthy husband suddenly passed in a traffic accident in 2018, and my life was just, oh goodness, turned upside down, and I had plummeted in this deep, deep grief and acute pain and shock. I don't feel that I would have survived that whole period had I not been a meditation and yoga practitioner. So many days and so many nights, I had no idea how to live on, how to wake up, and how to be. But I counted each breath. I breathed through it. And on the days that I could feel like moving, I would stand on the mat and do my yoga practice. And these things for me to fall back on, they weren't new to me. I didn't have to learn how to do them amidst the chaos, right? I had already had this established discipline for, I guess, longer than 15 years. Um, so my body 
knew how to come back to the practice. My mind knew how to focus on breathing and to just come back to the simplicity of that. And without that, I just don't feel that I would have survived those days and nights and months and even years without going crazy, really. And as far as I can tell you, of all of the things that I have had to accept, make peace with, and therefore let go in my life, grief was one of the most difficult emotions to feel, accept, and then to release, right? To let go of the longing and wanting of my husband and instead to embrace and to make peace with the fact that he wasn't going to come back and that I was going to live the rest of my life without him, at least not in the way that I had expected or hoped to be with him. And in accepting my own depth of grief, which included anger, numbness, hate, deep, deep pain, sorrow, depression, darkness, chaos, longing. Yeah, it was just a mess of a lot of things. Wanting to die, wanting to kill, all of that. I also learned that as I, step by step, day by day, learned to accept my grief, that my capacity for acceptance grew. So on those days and nights when my son, who was eight years old when his father passed, when my son had his grief-stricken nights, oh, just crying and screaming and agonizing pain, instead of fighting it, resisting it, or overlaying it with some kind of uh, false-ish blanket, like, oh, it's going to be okay, like none of that crap, right? Instead, I could hold him, be with him, be present with him, and just ride the pulse of that grief, that wave together, to not resist it and to let it pass. And for me, during those years, those first few years of grief, that was the best wisdom that I had in me to be with it. I came to understand that feeling the emotion is a huge missing component that not just me, but a lot of people in society are truly needing, but actually missing. So as I came back to you know, teaching yoga and meditation and sharing with my community, I started doing these workshops on really being with and feeling the emotion and allowing the emotion to be there, to not resist it. And in feeling the emotion, it then serves to propel you forward beyond the emotion that some of our darkest ugliest, most depressive, scariest thoughts and feelings must not be avoided, must not be resisted. They must be embraced and accepted. Slowly, slowly, as I felt this visceral sense of, you know, wow, this is really a powerful practice to come to full self-acceptance of all of the things that are most difficult to accept, I hugely began to appreciate the power of self-acceptance. And so here's the thing, okay? 
I, I totally believe in self-acceptance. I, I believe that it's one of the most necessary practices and, and choices we need to make in awareness so that we don't keep separating those aspects of ourselves that we judge within ourselves, we judge as shadow, but that we come to integrate them so that we can be wholly who we are, right? Now, more recently, like in the past, oh, I don't know, few weeks and months, as I was facing challenging emotions in myself, there was, there's this project that I've been working on and it's taking longer than I had hoped and I've just been feeling a whole mixture of wonderment, but also excitement, but also frustration and impatience and antsiness and why isn't this happening this way and why isn't this happening on this timeline and all that good human stuff. And every time these feelings would come up, I would sit myself down in meditation or um, even in journaling or during my days just to be with them and to accept them as they come up and to meet them in presence. Or so I thought, I thought that's what I was doing and I thought that I was doing good. But also I was slowly beginning to recognize that I wasn't really changing. Something felt a little off, a little stagnant. And I noticed that there was a little bit of an insidious agenda behind my self-acceptance, as in, oh, if I can just accept this next dark feeling, this next shadow aspect, and if I could just accept and come to terms with and make peace with these sensations, then can I just get over it and, and move on with my life? And do you get that? That's actually not essentially self-acceptance. That's pretense self-acceptance with an agenda. And I had to get really real with myself about how I was treating myself. So recently I came across a YouTube clip by the teacher Louise K, not to be confused with Louise Hay, also a great teacher and author and speaker and all of that. Um, but Louise K, I believe is kind of like an Advaita Vedanta or non-dualistic kind of meditation uh, teacher. And in this um, clip, she was talking about how it's a common trap for those who practice meditation who know that they're supposed to accept all the difficult emotions and accept all of the darker thoughts and feelings, that it's actually a common kind of trap to do those things with an agenda attached to it. And actually, she says, that's not the practice. The practice is to accept them as they are, as they come up, without an agenda. Our practice is to accept them unconditionally. And here's the big difference. This is my interpretation of it. The big difference is that if you are accepting the darkness and the shadows unconditionally, you're saying, oh, it's okay that they're there. It's okay that they're there forever. And if they never leave, maybe that's not what you prefer, but you've accepted it. You've made your peace with it. So it's okay. It's not bad. Now, if you're anything like me, that can kind of be a tough one to swallow because you're like, no, I don't want to be there forever, right? On the other hand, yeah, if you're like me and you're like, er, no, I don't want to have those feelings forever, you have that hidden insidious agenda of, well, if I just make peace and if I just accept this, then can I turn the page and 
get over this already. And I'm putting words on this, but all of this stuff in meditation, they are just energies. They happen in silence and they're feeling states. They don't have words to them. So Louise K, she talks about, um, yeah, how if you have an agenda attached to your self-acceptance, it's actually not kind to yourself. Well, she, I, I believe the word she used was the approach you're taking is violent. And when she said that, for me, it totally hit home. And I like went into full repentance mode because I was like, oh my God, she's right. I've been mean to myself, to that aspect of myself, whipping my butt like it needs to be fixed. It needs to be changed. I need to get over this. And so it's a total paradox, but self-acceptance for those of us who are maybe a little bit more um, experienced uh, in the practice of meditation as we progress with our practice, um, yeah, self-acceptance all the way. And let's be mindful that our self-acceptance isn't, doesn't come with an agenda attached to it, right? Because who wants an agenda attached to anything? That's not real love. That's not real acceptance, right? And so here I am. I just had to say, sorry, May, sorry to myself. I'm sorry. I was still mean to me. Under the guise of self-acceptance, I was taking a mean approach, if that makes any sense. So I guess my reminder to you this week is to just check in and make sure that your self-acceptance is pure because yes, you absolutely deserve it as yes, I do believe I deserve it too. Thank you for listening. Learn more about me in my upcoming book, Kizuki, Realizations Beyond Time and Death, at my website, maey.live, or find me on Instagram at maeyoshikawa.